One of my favourite things in life is to meet someone new and a big star and an entertaining star. And let me say, a gorgeous star, Dame Edna Everidge, how are you? Darling, I'm so well. It's extraordinary, (laughs) isn't it, that an Australian housewife should be on the verge of being the toast of Broadway. Once again, this is my third big Broadway show. And unselfishly, I am sharing my stage with a little American crooner. Well, he really is a crooner, isn't he? And he's, he is little, but he is such a sweetheart. He had a lonely childhood, and he mentions that to the audience. I have found funny things about America. They are, and I have to admit to you, and will this be broadcast in the United States? I hope not. <laughs> there's, there's something a little bit foreign about them. There's something almost Hungarian about them. <laughs> But otherwise, they really do love me. And children come, senior citizens, uh, and even handicapped people. Because I think the word has got around that I can heal. (laughs) It's not really a thing I would recommend. I hope my dear friend and one of my, you know, a lovely, lovely person, Ken Dodd, does not get the reputation as a healer. Because you do (laughs) tend to get a lot of people... You know, you, you look out across the footlights at a sea of chrome. <laughs> Don't you find, though, this Michael man gets in the way? Because the show's called All About Me, but it's not because it's 50-50. He does get in the way. I mean, he, will he hear this? I hope not. He does. I've never had to go to a dressing room. You know, in all the places I've been, Birmingham, Bournemouth, Berlin... Hong Kong, Singapore, Penang, Cincinnati, Mexico City. I've never seen the dressing room. I'm on stage the whole time. This time I have to go down to my rather subterranean and not very nicely equipped dressing room and wait till he finishes singing some song. Of course, the gratitude that floods over the footlights when I appear is worth every minute of it. I was trying to think how to describe your voice because you sing a lot in this show and it's, um, well, it's delicious, of course, but it's a bit like a chain coming off a motorbike. That's a lovely thing to say. Here am I, (laughs) sitting in my dressing room in a beautiful, beautiful bathrobe designed by Jasper Conran (laughs) and you're an insult. Well, you're saying horrible things. I'm a contralto. (laughs) I am a contralto and Australia has produced wonderful singers. Olivia Newton-John... Dame Joan Sutherland, Kylie Minogue, to name but three, and all of them adore me. And they do not make insulting remarks. What part of England are you from? I'm from Nottingham, the Midlands, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. I just wanted to be real for a moment. Well, I, I'm, I'll give you a moment of reality. I believe in reincarnation. In fact, I put Shirley MacLaine onto the subject and past lives, and I've been a lot of interesting people. I was, for example, Maid Marian. So I used to live in Nottingham. And Sherwood Forest was more or less my front lawn. I could tell you pretty well every tree in that forest. And it was pretty big in my day. And Robin Hood was a lovely person. But I'm afraid he did have unusual relations with the Merry Men. He did. And Mary, by the way, is mistranslated in the old books. It's gay, I'm afraid. It is. And what about you and Friar Tuck? Friar Tuck? <laughs> well, he was the sort of Matt Lucas of Nottingham in those days. Um, Friar Tuck really was a delightful person. And uh, I got on very well with him. He could be, you know, he was rather heavy going, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a lot of... I was Margot Thatcher in a previous life. <laughs> really? Is there anything you should be telling us? Well, no, I won't at the moment because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty discreet. Mm. I just love doing what I do. You see, I've never gone professional. I am, strictly speaking, an amateur. And an amateur, darling, is someone who loves something, doing what they do. Amma, amma means to love, I believe, in Latin, perhaps even Greek. But it's a lovely word, or Australian Aborigine have a word a bit like it as well. And uh, 
It just means I love what I do. And I was given a gift when I was a little girl in Australia. And that gift was to bring joy to people all over the world. And I think the Americans need it very badly. I mean, they're being overtaken by China and soon by Brazil. There's a bit of sadness around, but they're such nice people. All ages, all sexual agendas, needless to say, in America, they're still exploring pretty yucky areas themselves <laughs> because they only discovered things like this late, very late. It's the Puritan tradition they're trying to overcome. When you talk about mucky areas, are we talking Detroit, places like that? Oh, Detroit, it's a sad area, darlings. It's... It's not coming up. It's on the way down. <laughs> you know, there are parts of England that are really... I mean, it's, I was in Liverpool recently, and it's beautiful. City of culture. City of culture, and that made a big difference. Mm. But New York isn't in the United States. I've been to many places where you can't really walk down the street in safety. But I do, because people hesitate to molest me. I don't have my bridesmaid Madge with me anymore. She passed away. And although I was a bit mean to her, I miss her. I do. I'm looking for, really, looking for a replacement. Mm. I'm wearing a many beautiful dresses designed by my son, Kenny. This robe, of course, was designed by someone else, Jasper. But, and I must get Stella to run me up something too, don't you think? <laughs> yes, I think something nice would be would be appropriate. And talking of your frocks, I don't know how you're going to take this, and please don't get offended, because already... Well, you're going to say something else, insulting, yes. well, at midnight. This is midnight, listeners, when we're recording this interview. It is knocking on a bit. It feels like it as well. Let, let's talk about your blue frock tonight, because I noticed your legs, Dame Edna, and they were terrific. Congratulations. Well, my legs are beautiful, but the trouble is... They taper off a bit as you move north. And I have become, listeners, you won't believe this, a little chubby. And it's the good life, I'm afraid. It's the, you know, the fries and the hamburgers and all that type of thing. So I'm going to have to do something a little bit radical. Mm. But I'm very healthy. I enjoy my life. My, I travel only with a gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> and I have an exploratory before every show. He checks me out, and with any luck, I get the thumbs up. David, how do you get away with saying things that anybody else would be arrested for? You do it with a wink in your eye, don't you? Well, I just speak directly. People appreciate honesty from actresses like me. And I'm not the ordinary actress. I mean, look at them all. They're so, some of them, frankly, you must find as an interviewer, some of them are a little bit uninteresting. The trouble with theatre people <laughs> is that they are a very uncomfortable mixture of vanity and um, insecurity. Vanity and insecurity are, in combination, pretty unattractive. And that's what most show business people are like, unfortunately. But I have my theatre school in Australia, and I have to explain to Americans where Australia is. It's not easy. <laughs> I say, well, first of all, you have to leave America. <laughs> and they say, what does that mean? I said, a passport. They look blankly when you hear the word passport. Then I say, you fly towards Japan and turn left. And then you keep on going and I said 12 Nicolas Cage movies later you're there <laughs> well <laughs> I have to point out that the Nicolas Cage mo mo movies are not compulsory <laughs> or no one would fly to Australia but they, they love all that and I, I think I'm giving an educational show to the extent that Michael Feinstein allows it but we have crafted together Something, I think, which will make people happy. And that's the whole point of it, isn't it? Mm, it is. One thing I noticed about you on stage on Saturday night was the pouting. It's something I've fallen in love with over recent years. I saw you in Birmingham uh, just last summer. And you, oh, the, really? when did you start pouting? Well, I suppose as a child, really, at the breast. <laughs> I mean, babies pout a bit when they're being fed, don't they? I think it's just if I don't like something... I have to telegraph it to my public. <laughs> I, I'm a very demonstrative woman. 
I think in a former life I was probably, um, well, I was Queen Nefertiti of the Nile, of course, <laughs> and I think somewhere or other I was Lady Macbeth. That was not a, an enjoyable incarnation. I was never Esther Anson. <laughs> well, let me tell you, my darlings back home, I miss you very, very much because much as I'm loving my success here, I do enjoy the company of my British possums more than anyone because we speak the same language, we're on the same page. And my home suburb in Melbourne, Australia of Mooney Ponds is a little bit of England transplanted into a nicer area. Very finally, before we go, I want to talk to you about your acid tongue. I do have slight acid reflux, <laughs> which could affect my, my tongue. <laughs> I noticed as you start the show, you come on and, and offend half the ladies on the front row. It's, it's not very nice, is it? I've had no complaints. <laughs> I'm not offending them. I'm empowering them. <laughs> I'm using a little bit of tough love on them. I'm telling them things they need to know. Mm. And the gratitude that I've had, the letters. Edna, you chose me the other night. You pointed out that I was, well, <laughs> not very well dressed for the show. And you know, I went home and burnt that dress. And you have, my life has turned around because of you. If people ask for their money back, that's another matter. <laughs> But I belong in the company, really, of the old music hall. It's a great old British and Australian tradition. Ken Dodd is perhaps a master at it. Other lovely people, well, the little Izzards and Connollys, they're all wonderful. And the little Britain people, I, 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 a lot of words they use I'm afraid I don't approve of. Uh, and I think they're a bit homophobic. <laughs> But my son, you know, is unmarried mm. and he finds some of the things they say a little horrible, mm. I'm afraid. And my daughter suffers from obesity. I'm rather <laughs> proud of the fact that I have a dysfunctional family. I came to a big decision when I first had a little whiff of fame. Put your family last. And that's my <laughs> message to women listening. Put it last. They'll never thank you if you sacrifice yourself for them. This is Dame Edna <laughs> in her luxurious yet slummy dressing room in the bowels of Broadway, feeling a bit homesick and thanking you for having me at your place. <laughs>